Well, thank you, Harry, and uh, thanks to you all for coming here today, where I formally launch my bid to be the next leader of Labour in the Scottish Parliament and to be the next Labour First Minister of Scotland. The support I've received already from East Lothian Labour Party, from Press and Pans Labour Club, and from my colleague Anne Moffat MP, who's here today, has been tremendous. And thank you too to my MSP colleagues who have nominated me uh, for this contest. I've come here to launch my bid because this is the place, and you are the people who gave me in this very room a fresh start in politics in last year's Scottish elections. And so I come here now to offer a fresh start and a new voice to the leadership of Scottish Labour. Press and Pans is no stranger to new ideas and progressive voices. It was here that John P. McIntosh, one of the great modernising thinkers of our party's recent times, argued the case for devolution and for Europe long before these ideas became the Labour mainstream. It was here and in the village halls of East Lothian that he expounded these ideas. And it was the Labour Party that I am privileged to represent which published and publicised them. McIntosh drew his strength from traditional Labour communities. His key supporters were miners and builders and railwaymen. And some of you are here today. But he commanded support and respect from across county and class. We are strongest when we remember who we are, but look forward to what we can be and reach out beyond our heartlands. We are strongest when we do not fear new ideas and open debate and do not try to pretend that we all agree with each other on everything all of the time. And that is why I welcome this leadership contest. Yet, while the venue is propitious, the times are not. The last 15 months has not been an easy time to be a Labour Party member or supporter. Losing power in the Scottish Parliament, losing ground in councils across Scotland, and only last week uh, losing one of our heartland seats in Glasgow. Meanwhile, the progress of the last 10 years suddenly seems fragile. People are worried again about the cost of living, of making ends meet, of how they pay or even find a mortgage or make higher and higher rent payments. Fuel costs make travelling or turning the heating on something many have to think twice about. But friends, we've seen difficult times before. I joined the Labour Party at the end of the 70s when we were at rock bottom and many of you in this room remember well the 80s and how hard they were. Hard for the Labour Party, but more to the point, hard for our communities. You know how lives and families and communities in those years were blighted, devastated by a politics which had at its heart the ethos of division, of looking after number one. I was a teacher then in Gracemount in Edinburgh. Some of the kids there had difficult backgrounds, but they were full, as kids are, of life and energy and hope. And in 1982, I left there and I went and worked as a teacher overseas for two years. And when I returned, the atmosphere had changed. The youngsters believed they had no future, no chance of a job. They thought society did not want them. <clears throat> All that they could be had been crushed. It took us years to turn that around. And we must never let it happen again. Never. <laughs> 